Brahma. I will be speaking English tonight. I hope most of you will be okay with that. Uh, so um, I came of age when former Yugoslavia basically started falling apart. Decades of political turmoil and oppression culminating in genocide that we all remember destroyed not only lives, villages, cities, but most importantly, the education system of Kosovo. My life story that I would like to share with you today, some of you may know, but uh, it's uh, very much like many stories of other young people who have been touched by political oppression and war. Uh, since very young age, I had wanted to be a scientist. However, I did not quite understand how could one become a scientist. For to me, at that time, scientist was an idealized, almost a mythological figure of some sort, where superpowers were to discover things. In our schools growing up, we had no labs of any kind. We had no musical instruments. We had no cafeterias. And uh, peak hour was spent in a schoolyard, playing tag, playing soccer, or in winter having snowball fights. However, this lack of all necessary facilities and equipment was offset somewhat by wonderful, excellent, dedicated teachers who gave us very good education and inspired our young minds to wonder just about anything. In college, for the first time, I had a chance to, an opportunity to get involved in research. Dr. Ramsey Bakali's laboratory in the Department of Agriculture at the University of Pristina was one of the very few places at the university that one could get involved in research. It was very common for me as an undergraduate student to spend very long hours in a lab, learning techniques, conducting experiments, or reading science books from Dr. Bakali's library, which we all shared, obviously. The end of my formal education in uh, Kosovo was very abrupt and rather simple, really. One day in the early 90s, a heavily armed special police forces came into a room where we were holding our research meeting. We all looked up and heard an order. You must leave within five minutes, and if you don't, we will make you. I remember picking up my bag and following Dr. Bakali, my professor at the time, and other students out of the building, not quite realizing that university would be close to all Albanian students, me included, and staff, and that would, I would not be able to step foot in a university building enough again for another decade. As other young Albanians with no possibility of gaining any sort of employment or continuing my education, I became a part of an exodus of persecuted professors, students, and other professionals. After months of trying to learn German and attempting to leave Kosovo, a phone call came, and with it, uh, an opportunity to possibly continue my education in the US, United States. However, due to an embargo that was placed on former Yugoslavia, I could not travel because I was a Yugoslavian citizen. Accompanied by a young cousin and carrying a duffel bag with a few of my belongings, I managed a dangerous crossing of the Kosovo-Albanian border. In the following few months, I spent whatever money I had brought with me in post-communist Albania, obtaining residency documents and passport citizenship. Albania was undergoing tremendous changes at the time. Thousands of people were leaving, fleeing, in search for better lives. When I obtained the American visa at the embassy in Tirana, I was very excited. At the same time, I was terrified. I spoke no English, I had $75 to my name, and I had to leave within a week. But going back was not an option. It, was it is difficult to imagine today for all the young people that I had used computer a very few times. I had only heard about the existence of email or internet. So the US education system to me was a big unknown, and I had no idea what awaited. Unexpectedly, in the US, I met educators and friends who became my champions. Dr. Ramsey Bakali and his family, who had already traveled to the US, took me into their home and treated me like family till I got my own place to live. Dr. William Ragland helped me find an apartment, lend me money, so I could start my new life as a student, gave me a part-time job in his lab so I could have some income and attempt to start or continue my graduate studies. Another professor, Dr. Nick Dale, he gave me a project that paid something so I would be able to continue and not quit because I didn't have money to pay for that semester. 
After a certain time of struggle, I passed appropriate exams, and with the support of my, another mentor of mine, Dr. Jean Pesty, I received a scholarship from the Department of Poultry Science at the University of Georgia, and I was an officially a master's student. Receiving an MS degree for me in nutrition marked the beginning of my higher education, but most importantly, the beginning of my ability to communicate in English well enough. Having access to the university libraries and scientific literature allowed me to expand my interests into physiology, immunology, host pathogen interactions. I then received a PhD degree in avian immunology at the University of Arkansas. I started postdoctoral work in the laboratory of Dr. Roy Curtis at Washington University in St. Louis. This was a very challenging and humbling time for me, for I entered a new whole field of science which I had little or no knowledge of. In Roy's lab, I learned a great deal about microbiology, molecular biology, bacterial genetics, but most importantly, I was in an intellectually challenging, diverse environment, working with scientists from all continents, and I loved it. In addition to being one of the world's leading bacterial geneticists and microbiologists, Roy was a mentor that supported me in every aspect, including developing my teaching skills. I spent about four and a half years in Roy's lab, constructing and evaluating recombinant attenuated salmonella vaccines. Salmonella is a gram-negative pathogen. It's an enteric pathogen that usually infects people via contaminated food and water, causes inflammation, fever, anemia, enlargement of the spleen. However, since my PhD days, I was very interested in mucosal immunology, and having spent time in Roy's lab, I became very interested in studying how salmonella invades intestines and to go on and cause disease. To do this at Washington University, I developed an in vivo imaging uh, model of the intestine using two photon microscopy, which then enabled me to observe early inflammatory responses during salmonella infection, as well as internalization of proteins by intestinal cells. This work led to the discovery that intestinal goblet cells, we, which we all know secrete mucus, are involved in uptake of different protein antigens from the intestines. Thus, they may play a role in induction of immunity or tolerance to intestinal antigens. Thus, goblet cells could potentially become targets for therapies against inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, uh, and different food allergies. After decades of training, I finally established my own laboratory at Southern Illinois University, where I teach immunology and microbiology courses. In addition, I mentor PhD and master's students, as well as undergraduate students. We focus our work mainly on trying to understand better the mechanisms by which different proteins and antigens are internalized in intestinal mucosa and respiratory mucosa. We work on developing recombinant bacterial and nanoparticle-based vaccines, focusing on mucosal vaccines specifically. Uh, and our third interest is in trying to understand salmonella pathogenesis or bacterial pathogenesis in general. Thus far, we have shown that epithelial cells of both intestinal and reproductive tracts are capable of internalizing not so only soluble protein antigens, but also other particulate antigens, such as bacterial cell debris, uh, virus-sized particles, etc. We have also shown that long-lasting immunity in the mucosal surfaces can be induced primarily by mucosal priming or first immunization, followed by another or second secondary immunization, which is systemic. And basically, to sum it up, the importance of our work uh, lies in the fact that majority, over 95% of all infectious diseases, be it viral, bacterial, or parasitic infections, occur at mucosal surfaces, mainly intestinal, respiratory, and uh, reproductive tracts. However, uh, making vaccines to target those pathogens has been very challenging, and that is mainly because uh, antigens or vaccines that we're, we make uh, do not uh, efficiently get internalized, and they do not induce sufficient immunity, or they're not sufficiently immunogenic. Therefore, to date, we have very few mucosal av vaccines available for uh, humans that are licensed. This approach 
that we are using, and our work is basically uh, geared towards developing mucosal vaccines, we would target diseases such as mycobacterium tuberculosis, salmonella, listeria, HIV, etc. And our work, we hope, will benefit and will uh, help decrease the burden of infectious diseases worldwide, especially in third world countries, which, where those diseases are much more uh, prevalent. In my journey, in addition to learning science, the most important lesson that I learned is that educators alone have the power to change lives, and thus they can change the world. There are so many mentors and friends that helped me, and the question becomes, how do I repay them? Erasmus has said that, that the hope of a nation lies on educating its youth. The education system of Kosovo has been targeted for destruction by the Serbian regime since the 80s. I experienced personally and vividly remember teachers and professors being arrested for activities against the state, scenes of hundreds of poisons, children, Kosovar children experiencing seizures at schools, and deafening sounds of ambulances carrying children to hospitals. I remember the closing of the schools and pupils getting an education in private houses and garages till the armed conflict broke out. Now we came to another era. Kosovo has been an independent country since 2008. What is the state of education system in Kosovo today? Although some progress has been made in rebuilding Kosovo's infrastructure, which was devastated by the, uh, by the war, the education system is all but destroyed, and it is the final hour that efforts must be made and resources allocated in order to rebuild it. Decades of brain drain and the politicizing have crippled the University of Pristina, one of the only public universities where most Kosovar students could get a higher education, regardless of their socioeconomic status. Private universities, operating mostly without much academic criteria, have mushroomed everywhere, Often, diplomas and grades can be purchased. Most professors hold multiple teaching posi positions at multiple universities, and there is little or no research being conducted. Teaching laboratories are not equipped for training graduate or undergraduate students. So I came here today to call on my fellow colleagues, university leaders and administrators, to reach out to trained Kosovars abroad and involve them in the rebuilding of the university. I'm certain that most of us will not hesitate to contribute in any way that we can. Although some faculty that have been trained abroad have returned to the university, and with them they have brought modern, innovative teaching and research approaches, there are many more that can fill in the gaps in various fields of science. We have all benefited from other educators, and it's our turn now to pay it forward. The most precious resource that Kosovo has is its youth. Kosovo's young people have demonstrated over and over that they're capable and can become educated professional workforce. They can propel Kosovo's economy. They must be given a chance to have institutions and educators who will step up and help them re realize their dreams and their potential. Kosovo must provide its youth with education opportunities for the future, or else it will not have a future. So I challenge the university leaders and faculty to fight for depoliticizing of the university, not to succumb to the political pressures of the day, and to remember that we are educators before anything else. Thank you.